Hey, what's up everyone? Dragon here, back with another edition of the Kaiju Commentary. On this one, we are watching 1967's Yonger, a monster from the deep. Now, when you see the MGM logo appear on your screen, that is your cue to start listening to us. So we're going to kick things off in 3, 2, 1. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Kaiju Commentary. Today, we are watching 1967's Yonger, a monster from the deep. <laughs> South Korea's... Uh, foray into the kaiju genre. Uh, this film has kind of become famous for a couple reasons, uh, at least amongst kaiju fans. Um, um, the first and most notable one is to it's, uh, you know, South Korea making a kaiju flick, which, you know, with the exception of like a Gorgo, you know, and a few American films that kind of had a kaiju-esque feel, this is really the first non the other the other non-japanese big you know, s you know tokusatsu kaiju film uh and the other thing is too is that you will notice that no matter where you watch this movie uh you are watching the english dub because uh, apparently when they were kind of exporting the film abroad they were not used to doing this kind of stuff the the the, the film industry was kind of new in south korea at the time uh with south korea being basically a young nation at this point so they don't really know how, kind of how to do this, right? So they essentially, I guess from what I understand, destroyed the masters or the original. So even in South Korea, wow. they watched the dub. <laughs> because the original language track no longer exists. I mean, there's a few pieces that exist. That sucks. And I know they have it like in their film archive, their museum, where you can watch, I think, about 20, 30 minutes of this movie with the original audio still there. But that's like the only bit of it that still exists. So, you know... Young Gary will forever be a dubbed movie. Even though I've always said, if you could find the script mm -hmm. and try to match up the the lip flaps, have I would love to see like well, a student. Well, it wouldn't be any worse than the uh, English dub. Yeah, right? no, so... I would love to see them redub it in well, Korean. So at be... least it would be like the language would be right coming out of their mouth. But I don't know how easy of a feat that'd be, or quite frankly, who'd want to spend the money on doing that? Because outside of <laughs> kaiju fans, I don't really think this movie. Uh, ranks that high up of importance in terms of like global cinema but unfortunately but you never know i'd love to with all the uh attention kaiju films are getting now you know that could happen and i would very much love for it to happen but yeah young gary why is the uh, mountain in part of the road right there <laughs> and that's what happens when the natural world uh encroaches on the man-made world it's okay, kind of like a reverse way? thing And to be fair, it is a good dub. I mean, I mean, and this is back in the day too, where they would kind of do uh, accents. Wow. Which is which which is interesting too, because like, you you could make it you make the argument it's more authentic if they're not going to be speaking Korean, to actually kind of give them something. I mean, I'm not quite sure how uh, good their Korean accents are. But you could make the argument that, okay, by them doing Korean accents, it they're trying to make it as authentic as possible. So it's like if they're going to be speaking English, they're not speaking English for like a Brooklyn accent or something. Well, I was going to say they should have gotten actual Korean Americans, but I forget for the time they dubbed this. <laughs> I mean, with like a lot of the Godzilla films that were brought over to the States, I mean, they did sometimes have a lot of time like Japanese Americans dubbed them. Like I know like uh, George Takai mm -hmm. did a lot of the old Godzilla films. Yeah. But it's just one of those things that I'm curious if this were to happen today and they were to dub the film today, I don't think they would do kind of the the pseudo accent because I think more people would be offended by that to hear mm -hmm. like a white person or whoever well, like that's what I'm saying, yeah. doing like their imp impression of, you know, a non-American, I guess. I don't know. I think for the time they were, it was trying to be more sincere, but I think today it would come across as racist because it seems like everything today comes across as racist. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into that, but I'm just, I'm just saying. But you know, because again, this is the only version of the film that exists anywhere. It's kind of like, well, it's kind of like a unless it's closer than if they're walking around going, "Yo, oh. I hate when that happens too. Yeah, that was that, that was dramatic. He's like, ah. Ugh.
Wait, are they stripping? Well, they just got married and they just cannot wait. Little shithead. <laughs> yes, take off all your clothes. Wait, where's the driver? Is he not taking his clothes off? Well, he's kind of doing it. I don't know. I just got really horny and I was like, fuck it. Let's do it right here, right now. <laughs> that was my reaction, too. So, like, he's just out in the middle of this random stretch of road. It's a really safe neighborhood. Man, street violence is really weak in South Korea. I live in places you gotta worry about drive-bys. Here, you got those little shitheads just hitting you with itch rays. You're gonna be late for your honeymoon, where you can have sex like jackrabbits. Mm. Kid's a little cock blocker. <laughs> I mean, somebody just knocks his ass out. Pushes him off the cliff. I love kind of like the big American cars, too. Now, I've heard other commentators kind of speak of on this movie, so, I mean, I'm going to probably say some stuff that you guys have already heard before, but I fear it bears repeating, because it is kind of significant and interesting. Um, um, again, at this point, I mean, it wasn't too long after the Korean War, and you know, Korea was, n South, or excuse me, South Korea uh, was not as uh, this far along as this movie portrays it to be. Like, you see, like, the big cars... You see they have like a space program, all that. This is more or less like the ideal of what South Korea wanted to become. Now they were a young nation. So this film was... It, it's science fiction for not just because there's a giant monster stomping around. But also because it's kind of portraying kind of the hopes and dreams of for South Koreans. Like this is the country they want to become. This is, you know, yeah. as put together and well to do they want to become. So for... South Koreans, when they first saw this film, um, in a weird way, it was more of a fan, not fantasy, like, into, like you know, like, sorcery and, and whatnot, but, like, fantasy, and like, wow, you know, look at this ideal version of our country, you yeah. know, the, the look at look, what they were working to achieve, so it was kind of like the, 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 yeah, the ideal of their country now under attack by something, you know, terrible, so for them, it was more, the threat was more, uh, heavy for them because it's like here is what they want and now it's being destroyed so for us it's just kind of hey it's a cool monster movie but for them it was more like oh my god look at you know this is clearly a south korea that has worked hard and achieved its dreams and now it's under attack you know what i mean and so to see that being coming undone you know was more hard-hitting for them Mm -hmm. So like with a go good kaiju films there's always a bit of allegory to them and so and this film was no exception but again Unless you were really South Korean, that, that allegory would have uh, kind of gone over oh, your head. Oh, is that supposed to be like him on a porch with a sky? I guess so. Oh. 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 Maybe it's just that sad. He's like, it's like actually a brick wall he painted to look like a sky. <laughs> one day, one day, they'll let <laughs> us out and we'll see the sky. So what? Uh, that was a weak ass scare. I am. You just like backhands her. What, what year did this take place in again? Um, or not take place, but what was it? What came out in 1967. I'm not sure if this one it's supposed to take place. It, it, it's difficult to say. Is it's kind of like, you know, alternate South Korea 1967, or is it supposed to be a Korea that's a little, so excuse me, South Korea a little bit further along? I mean, yeah. Again, the film doesn't really go into that part of it. I think, again, they more or less just be like, you know what? We're making a kaiju film. Let's just have fun with it. Let's just kind That's of... That's the thing. Was this like a big budget movie for them? For South Korea, yeah, it was. Damn. They actually uh, had some, uh, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, some of the, um, you know, the suit makers from Toho come in and help them out. <laughs> Again, this film, you can see that there's a lot of um, newness to it in terms of like the, the studio not used to making these movies. This is kind of a, a trial and error for them. And something else a commentator also put out, too, is that they had a lot of decency laws in South Korea, what you can and cannot show. Like, here they're supposed to be kissing, but if you look... Their cheeks are touching. Yeah, she turned her face, because you can't have, like, two actors really locking lips like that on camera. So they kind of have to give the illusion. Again, I'm, I'm not saying anything that you guys probably haven't already heard, but again, it just kind of shows you 
the differences too, not just in effects and budget, but also Maybe like they're just what you really, can show. Uh, really shy new, bleh, newlyweds. Unless cheeks are really hot over there. Yeah, just rubbing cheeks. Rubbing cheeks, man. Let me give me some of that cheek. Jesus. <laughs> My boy. I'm not quite sure how close the um, the English dub script is to the original Korean one. Uh, I would imagine it's not too far up in terms of like, you know, I mean, usually they don't do like direct translations because certain things in certain languages don't translate properly over into English and vice versa. But I'm not quite sure how close the specifics are. I'd be curious to see. I should be curious to see, like, a translated version of the original script. I don't even know if the original script is still around, like, because mm. I would imagine... Again, I would imagine if it was, they would have tried, at least tried to redub it in Korean. I mean, why not? But, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see, though. Cock blocker! I know, right? Well, jeez, whatever. He could just leave that phone with that antenna with her. <laughs> but, yeah, you'll definitely see, like, the Yang Gary suit, like, and even some of the, um, the miniature sets where... Obviously, sophistication is not as high as you would see in Toho. But again, they were new to this, you know. So you could definitely see, like, this is a studio, um, uh, you know, kind of learning the ropes in terms of, like, you know, kaiju films. Mm-hmm. Even though, from what I understand, this is the only one they did. So it was for a lot of these non, uh, a lot of these non Toho films, you know. They'd put a movie out, and that was kind of it. You know, I felt that was kind of more of a cash grab, you know? Yeah. But we did get some, a lot of good movies from that movie. We got Gorgo. We got Gappa. You know, these are movies I really enjoy. And I think Gone Gary, while not as good as those, in my opinion, of course, uh, I definitely think it's a good movie. It's a fun movie, I'd say. I mean, it really has fun with the genre, I feel. So, whatever... Uh, budgetary shortcomings it might suffer from. I don't know if suffer is a, you know, really a right word for it, but you know you know what I mean. Yeah. I think it more than makes up in just being a kind of a fun movie. She's like, oh, he's in space now. I can hit on other men. Take your pick. You want the silver fox there? You want the, <laughs> the guy with the nice jawline right there? Guy with the expensive suit there? Guy with the clipboard in the back? You got options, baby. All of them. All of them. She's like, I'll have them all. Take that, flat earthers. <laughs> now die. Yes. Commence self destruct. <laughs> Look at him. She's not even. Wait. She went with the guy with the money. <laughs> I feel like we're watching the Miracle of Life video right now. Ew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So wait, is he just by himself in there? Usually there's at least two people. Listen, this is this is this is science. He is that good, I guess. He is sciencing so hard right now. He just looks tired, kind of like he's got to poop. Well, he did have to go there in a hurry, so he might have had to, you know, <laughs> forego a few steps. Didn't have a chance to expel. Wow. <laughs> Nothing but uh, quality content here on the Kaiju Commentary, folks. That's what I bring. <laughs> well, now that your man's in space. <laughs> hey, they're good looking. God, that hat. It just makes her look like she's got a stupid shaped head. Oh, it's probably to have her hair. Yeah, because I have that still. big. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Some nice matte painting, though, I gotta say. Mm. The only problem is that you can tell they have smaller sets here, because, like, like, even just a moment ago, you saw when the smoke rise, you saw it hitting the ceiling. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, again, limited space. So they have really good matte paintings and really good depth perception, you know, in terms of, like, but there's the space itself is not as large. Whenever they have any kind of effect like that, it kind of makes it obvious. Mm-hmm. You're gonna see why. Interesting point, too, I like how Yang Gary comes out of the ground. 
and not the ocean. So when they say monster from the deep, a lot of people would almost just assume again it's coming out of the water. Yeah. But um, unlike Japan, in, uh, South Korea, you know, is a peninsula. So it is part, it is landlocked, whereas Japan is completely surrounded by water. Mm-hmm. So with that, you can, you, I like the idea of playing up that, you know, Yangari comes from the ground. He doesn't necessarily have to come from the water. So just something different. I mean, <laughs> one step off. And we have, again, the newsreels, you know, something you saw a lot in the Toho films. Classic. Guys. Yeah. Again, you could make the argument that, okay, this is them ripping off um, Godzilla and Toho. Or you could also make the argument that Toho basically just kind of set a lot of the staples of the genre. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, is, is it a ripoff? Or is it just like, well, these are kaiju movies and this is what they do, you know? Mm-hmm. It, I guess it's how you want to interpret it. I think now, this far along in history... It's more of like a, a genre staple at the time. You could maybe make the argument that it was a... Uh... Man, check out her psychedelic jacket. I know, right? It's a hot look. Dem colors. Oh yeah, by the way, this movie, I'm going to try to pronounce it, uh, the production company's name. I apologize, I am not as well versed with uh, the Korean dialect as I am Japanese, so I'm probably going to screw this up horribly, but it's the... Uh... Uh, Kyokdong Entertainment Company. I think I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I apologize. K E U K D O N G. So you keep saying capsule, but it sounds like you're saying asshole, asshole. Well, maybe the guy's an asshole. <laughs> that is just a really unfortunate name. What? His name being asshole. Oh. Like you know, his parents are just jerks. Yeah, maybe they're the true assholes. I once had a vice principal whose last name was Loser, so his name was literally Mr. Loser. Like, I'm not even joking, that was a real thing. I was just thinking to myself, like, why, dude? We just had Mr. Wiener. Wiener. Again, you see kind of like the little kid there. Again, already borrowing from kind of the, uh, starting to get like the staple of the Showa era of kaiju films where, you know... Kids are there in one form or another. Um, the kid in this film kind of feels a little bit more like the kid from a, a, a Gamma versus Gauss, where it's still an adult-oriented story, but there's kind of a child there who probably has a lot more access and influence than realistically a child would or should. Yeah. It's not like the later Gamma films where the kids are the driving force in the narrative. It's still like, okay... The kid's there, he says something once in a while, he might make a suggestion that the adult's like, oh yeah, we can turn that into something usable. So, you're, you're getting that kind of level of kid involvement in this film. Which is about all I can stomach. <laughs> so what was he trying to do up there anyways, if he's just going back to Earth now? Space stuff. Don't you, don't, don't you know? only he can do? Listen, listen, uh... Basically, that, that bombing you saw, that, you know, that opened up the, the fissure, basically he was going there to kind of investigate the, uh... Kind of the bombing side, basically. From space? Again, it's portraying a much more, uh, advanced society where again where they feel like yeah let's just go into space to do stuff it's like you know implying it now it's kind of that easy to do i'm just kind of like isn't that too high up to help like see it <laughs> i think again, it's more or less just trying to show like look guys space stuff he I mean, explodes you... <gasps> again this is during the, the time of the space race you yeah. know the cold war all that kind of stuff so again it's very much like space was on the minds of people so to have a country that had a a fully functioning space program was kind of a, a sign of prestige, almost like a power, you know. Of mm-hmm. a... Because again, South Korea was nowhere near this, you know, far along at this point in history. But like I said, this film is more about showing, it's, it's basically creating an idea, you know. It's a big fun monster movie featuring their country in a position of, you know, 
good standing, not just as a victimized country. Because I kind of feel, too, they could have easily have, the allegory for this one could have very, very easily have been, um, you know, South Korea, we're a young country, we're trying to make it, we're trying to get there. You know, very much like have an underdog story, you know, and that could have very much been the allegory and like the, the, the kaiju in the film, Yange, could have very much been kind of like, you know, with the world, you know, pushing down on them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting that they didn't go that route, that they decided, you know what, let's not make ourselves, I mean, we're victims of a kaiju attack, but we're not, you know, we're not just these beaten down people, you know, they, they were, mm -hmm. they're they uh, portraying themselves very much as like a forward moving country, a country that's achieved a lot, that they, they are not victims on their own, you know what I mean? Something of this magnitude has to happen to them for them to be victims, they're not just inherently victims, and I thought that's kind of a... Kind of a nice thing to, at the same time, because they're kind of basically, they're not just saying, hey, look at us, feel sorry for us. They're like, no, look at us. We're, we're doing things. We're getting things done. And when the problem arises, we're going to take care of it. So, you know, the film could have gone, I think, one of two ways. And they chose to go arguably the less obvious, but maybe the more interesting route. Mm. Again, I think for people of, South, people of South Korea, at this time... This would have had a lot more meaning to them than I think the rest of the world. Because I think the rest of the world was just like, hey, it's a Godzilla-like movie. Which, arguably, when I first saw this movie as a kid, that was my kind of take from it. Mm. Somebody turn that baby on. No, no. I saw this film not a few years, I think, or a year before I saw Gappa. Again, it was one of my dad's trips to the video store. And he would bring me back these little treasures. <laughs> it's like, usually he'd bring back a new Godzilla movie for me. I'm like, oh, snap, I haven't seen this one. But every so often, we'd bring home another Godzilla, a non-Godzilla movie. Uh, and younger, it was the case for that one, too. I was like, oh, wow. I was say, oh, it's the Godzilla, it's like Godzilla with a horn. <laughs> That's how I would describe it to all my friends. Yeah, it's like, he's basically Godzilla, he just has a horn. They're like, really? I'm like, Yeah. And also because all these films were dubbed back in the day. Seeing yeah. them on VHS, it was, you know. And I hate to uh, admit it, but in my youthful ignorance, uh, I was not aware that it was Korean versus, I just kind of, you know. Yeah. I saw people of a similar uh, ethnic orientation and it was like, oh, I guess it's just another, you know, Japanese giant monster movie. But then again, when I was a little kid, I, I thought Japanese people spoke English because all the Godzilla movies are in English. So I used to tell my mom, they're like, let's well, go to Japan because we don't have to learn another language because they all speak English over there. My mother would kind of smile and nod and probably be like, oh, my sweet, sweet idiot son. <laughs> By the way, I know they don't speak English over there now. Okay? <laughs> okay, some of you guys are still worried that, that, that does he still think they speak English over there? What just happened? I spoke as stupid as I sound <laughs> in my head. <laughs> God, this guy sounds like a fucking Bond villain. That's what I was just thinking. I was the like, United his voice Nations have, very like have made their demands. Like he needs to be sitting down in a big chair, petting like a hairless cat. Explaining to 007 his master plan. Oh. <laughs> He's like, but I had it all prepared. Listen to my voice. I already do martial law immediately. Oh, yeah. That easy, huh? That's scary. <laughs> well, we don't have to go through a committee for this? No, just martial law, huh? Okay. Why, uh... And this is a uh, martial law, huh? So uh, we're we're in South Korea, right? Just want to make make sure, yeah. South Korea, <laughs> martial law. Okay, just just checking, guys. Just want to make sure we were staying on, on the right side of the border here. Oh, guess we have to kill the children. Jesus. She kind of looked at the boy like martial law. Conserve food. Kill the child. Uh, 
Uh, I better start drinking some chemicals, see if I turn into the Hulk. <laughs> Damn, you sunk my battleship. I know, I'm like, what? Damn, they they play battleship for real over there. <laughs> oh. oh, man, well, fucking that sucks. game night is hardcore in South Korea. <laughs> the government plays games. They play to win. Don't they ever play, success. don't ever play the South Korean government monopoly. <laughs> They will fucking fight you for that boardwalk. So yeah, I've seen some of the, the, the miniature sets. Now, again, I'm not saying whenever you see the Toho. Usually you can tell it's a miniature set, but it's a bit more obvious here. And here we got our first start to look first look at Yon Gary. But you, I would have snapped at least one shot, dude. Even though that's some good uh, composite okay, shot right there. one shot. I don't know. You ran away like a bitch too fast. Mm -mm. They just drive off the cliff. I oh. regret a thing. Sis, why are you like leaning in, dude? Like, I... the other guy drive. But, um... What? I, I guess they just went off the cliff so fast they didn't show it. Do they just self destruct? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, he meant to switch gears, but he actually hit the suicide button. Damn. <laughs> That's terrible. I, yeah, what a. Don't ever let me uh... drive. They recall that model car pretty quick. <laughs> they called it a, uh, a factory flaw. So you, you try to put it in neutral and it just... Wait, so is oh. that the guy? That's a, sh that's a shitty suicide button. Wait, so how did they find him and recover him so fast? Thank God his camera somehow survived that horrible fall. Well, of course, it's not American-made, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Camera in America exploding would have probably killed him. Oh. What? what? <laughs> Everyone tell the camel. Um, what? Oh, they just showed the back. I've seen, like, Loch Ness photos that look more convincing than that. I was going to say, where was it in the photo? I it was, like, it. bottom kind of right-ish. Kind of, like, the, the dorsal spines a little bit. Uh. It's nice seeing, like, kind of the Korean countryside, though, because South Korea has a bit of a different kind of topographical look to it. Mm-hmm. Careful, bud. You're gonna drive off the road. Make sure this, you don't hit the self-destruct button when you try to park it. Dun, 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 dun. It bothers me that the red lights right there aren't even. Super action sequence right here. It's like chips, man. <laughs> man, look at him. Carefully take that turn in law-abiding fashion. <laughs> No, Do you see anything over there? What, you mean the same spot we're both looking? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> we looked over there but saw nothing. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's a whole lot of nothing happening over there. Oh, hang on. Something's happening now. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. That's what he said his first time. Oh. Strange disturbance going on. I don't understand what's going on. Jesus. Nice. Yeah, what happens when you, you know, lie with someone for the first time in the days before the internet? You don't necessarily know what's happening. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, shit. Um. <laughs> I 
Okay, they keep saying that, but I'm kind of like, okay, now you see him. But before that, you just saw the ground. And there we have him. Look at my little nose horn. I'm so cute. Hey, y'all. Godzilla with so the horn. So that's my point. I'm like, okay, so how do you guys just know about him? Like, well, I'm, I'm assuming they kind of the government kind of issued like a statement. Like, this monster has been called Yangari. Fuck the dead ones, though. <laughs> Let their bodies pile up and slow them down. Well, that's good. I'm glad you think that. <clears throat> Maybe you should know that. Classic, uh... So, again, it, it, it's however you want to, I guess, take it. Is this the Toho Godzilla ripoff scenes, people fleeing? Or is this, again, a staple genre? For me, I kind of feel it's a staple. Because, again, it's just one of those well, things Well, if there was a giant fucking it, monster... Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, and that's my thing. So, I think... I know that some people, again, have called this kind of the South Korean ripoff of Godzilla. And I'm like, well... A, Are you gonna stick around? And it's not like they all have. Cars. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying. Yeah, I mean, I would. I'd get my ass to be getting out of there too. That's my point. So it's. Dude, like... I felt the ground shaking. I'd be like, later. I'd be by Felicing that town so fast. But um, again, it's it's more or less. It's like, I feel with these kind of films. Oh, uh, see, he could fight King Kong. He's not afraid of electricity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like if this happened, certain things would just happen, and there's no way around it. Fuck that house. I know, right? Now, if you also look at Young Gary's mouth, it reminds me a little bit of Gamera because he kind of has like the underbite, yeah, like, kind of the, the tusk, yeah, going up. And I've always wondered, was that coincidence or is that them kind of just, because by this point, Gamera and Godzilla are kind of in full swing and they're both making money. So I'm kind of like, all right, I kind of feel they added, I mean, clearly this is more Godzilla influenced, Young Gary's design, but I kind of feel maybe the, the underbite is a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a nod to Gamera too, kind mm -hmm. of. And one of the things I noticed, too, with his design, and I don't know if it was just on purpose or it was just kind of maybe, you know, the lack of sophistication of the suit, was that, you know, his legs are a lot thinner. Usually with these kaiju films, like, the legs are bigger and heavier. Also, his mouth can't close all the way. <laughs> well, I also think it's just kind of the nature of how it's built. I know. Again, it's a... It's not like the worst suit ever. I'm not, I'm not not, but again, you can. It's not. It's compared to like a lot of the Toho suits. It's not quite as if it, It's kind of up there with like Gamera, I would say. Mm. But again, for a studio's first outing of this nature, it's it's a pre, it's pretty good. Like I mean, they got a lot of their, you know, aesthetics right. And again, they had some guys from Japan come and help them out with this. So they're you know. They were smart in the sense that they kind of hired some kind of outside contractors, I guess, you know, to kind of, you know, make sure they got it right, which showed them, okay, they were willing to, you know, not just be like, well, we're going to do this all ourselves because it's our movie. We don't want any help. They wanted to get the movie right. It was more yeah. important that the final product was something worthwhile. So they, you know, enlisted the help of others, admitting full well that they didn't quite know all the ins and outs yet and that they needed help. So I think that was a little shithead, but... <laughs> I think it's good that they, they did that. Because it definitely shows. I mean, the movie is a good movie. And if you're a kaiju fan, I think you can appreciate this movie. And again, I haven't really met any kaiju fans who hate this movie. Uh, there is a sequel in the late 90s that is kind of generally not liked. Um, I need my rug. That's an important rug. And that guy's got a globe. Jesus. There would be. Anytime some shit goes down, there's some jackass with a, with a Bible telling people to repent, to repent, to repent. It was the same thing in Gorgo, too. There was like Jesus. a... Jesus. Messy eater. Like, I drank that beer. He was like, he, he was not looking forward to it. He was like, oh, yeah, God. looks like he's in pain. Run for the hills. Why 
I just sound like... I, again, I know, like, some of the accents are really heavy, and some of the people, like... Oh, yikes. It's not a party I'd want to be at. Again, kind of showing, like, a youth culture. Because, again, I'm pretty sure at this point, too, like, stuff like this you wouldn't really see in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of showing you, like, you know, young Ew. people kind of, you know. Rude. I've seen fist fights break out in clubs. You have someone just knocking your drink. Like, and this dude's just pouring it all over the guy. I'm like, God damn. That's I like cool. how the lighting doesn't match. I like the shot though. I think the Dutch angle works. Ooh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like a younger, it kind of feels like he's built like a big bipedal bear. Mm hmm. I like how he can't commit to knocking one building down. Yeah, no, it looks like he's trying to decide, like, which one. I love these on-the-ground shots here, though, the Dutch angles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm one of those people where I, I hate when Dutch angles are overused, because to me it's, like, a very stylistic way to shoot the scene. Yeah. And I feel that sometimes it just looks gimmicky when people do it, but stuff like that, where it almost gives, gives it a, a manic quality to it. Mm -hmm. So the way you being used like that, I think that's cool. Again, yeah, I feel I would have given up a while ago. I've been like, "Fuck you guys," I ain't getting that close. Uh, uh yeah, a. <laughs> he just throws the kid out. Sacrifices must be made. <laughs> yeah, seriously, why are you just hanging out? Like, go. I know. Like, why do you need to see him? You can see him from much further away. He's giant. Again, I think this film is shot at its best on the ground level. I think it's, you know, the, the human stuff like this, you get a real sense of, like, how dire things are on the ground level. And that's sometimes something that I think kaiju films don't always capture. They focused... You bitch. Why which is being chased by Jason Voorhees. Why are you falling? I know. Um, and then incapable of getting back up. Oh! Jesus. <laughs> the kid's like, ah! Oh! It's like Young Gary threw a rock at him. Uh, but yeah, no, again, I feel like sometimes kaiju movies, they focus on too much on the wide stuff, like the monster destroying a city, and you don't, they don't cut as many shots of, like, people on the ground and what it would feel like to actually yeah. be there. And interestingly enough, I think this film is doing a really good job of showing that. I feel this stuff is actually more shot better than so even the monster stuff. they forget about the little kid? Oh. Yeah, I think the main thing that hurts the suit is really the legs. The legs feel very kind of small in comparison. They're not really built up, like, especially because he young... just doesn't work his legs out. Yeah, he skips leg day. Don't skip leg day, people. I, you know, it's important, too. You stand on them. That doesn't count as working Wait, them out. Wait, is he holding the kid? No. It's oh, just... it's not. Picked up a guy. Oh, and then chucked him? Yeah. He's like, oh, what's this? Trash. Throws it. Yeah. But yeah, no, again, I feel the legs feel like under... If they would have built up the legs a bit more, I feel they would have cut... Because again, he's got a very kind of broad midsection, which is fine. But again, like like Godzilla, you know, he has to have the lower body that's kind of larger and more proportioned. But obviously, the bigger the legs are, the harder it is for the actor to move. And like I said, you know, Toho was really good at building these suits and designing them in ways for, like, for the actors to move around and have the monsters of proportion. Whereas again, this studio here was very much still getting a, a handle on it and didn't have the same budget to put into the suit. So little things like that, you'll notice that it's like, okay, you can see how it might have been done better here or there. But again, for like the studio's like first outing of anything like this, it's really impressive. 
Yeah. And I've always said, if there's anything part about a kaiju that needs to look a little, eh, it might as well be the legs, because it's the thing you see the least from them, probably. <laughs> uh, this always tripped me out as a kid when I saw that. The fact that, okay, um, how, he's... How is the, the it not caving in when he's walking on it? That, well, that's the thing of all kaiju movies. I'm always like, okay, realistically speaking, I mean, because cities have subways and sewers, it's like, wouldn't the monster just go through the street? I don't know. Again, I think the only movie we've seen them actually show that is in Shin. They showed it a little bit, I think. Um, they showed it a little bit in Gorgo. If I remember I saying. There's been some Godzilla movies where they show, like, if he's right above the subway, his foot will build down. I think it's implying that if it's hollowed out enough, yeah. he will go through it. But I think it's also one of those inconvenient truths mm. that would be really inconvenient for your giant monster movie in a city if he's constantly falling through the, through the ground. So it's just kind of like, yeah, he doesn't fall through the ground. That would be something I'd be very curious to ask, though, because I know they've done things where they've asked, like, city designers and, like, FEMA and the National Guard, like, okay, as ridiculous as it is, if Godzilla attacked, what would be the protocol? And they've actually run through the protocol what they would do if yeah. Godzilla or any kaiju would attack a city. Well, it's just funny because I'm like, I mean, especially in Japan, you know, there's a lot of the subways are, you know, can be three, four levels deep. So it's like if they walked over one of those and sunk in, it'd just be like a, a pitfall or yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? Like, be a giant hole. And I would imagine it's similar here in South Korea. Yeah. Especially nowadays, you go to like the Seoul. Yeah. It'd be interesting if they did that in a kaiju movie, that's how they trap them, lure them to like a deep underground area. Well, I also imagine too, it'd be one of the things where the kaiju would have a hard time getting through the city because again, he basically would be well, kind yeah. of swimming through it, just, just walking essentially through the subway. Just destroying the street as it goes along. Mm -hmm. No, it'd be interesting to talk to like an engineer and ask him about that. Like, okay, if you have something that's this size and weight, would the streets even support him, no. or would he just keep going right through? Especially now, where they keep making kaiju's bigger. Like Godzilla yeah. just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm like, all right, well, the ground's not getting any thicker, so at some point he's gonna go through, right? I do like it when they have, like, the miniature, like, aircrafts in the shots of them. Because yeah. it gives them the uh, scale. Is, this, is that a good idea? <laughs> We're flying a of Yangiri at this minute. Uh, maybe you should not, then. <laughs> kind of, the, the spines on his back kind of feel more like a sail. It makes me think of, uh... Sukumimus a little bit. Mm. Has a had the spine that wasn't quite as big as Spinosaurus, but kind of that in between size. Interesting roar too. Kind of very Godzilla esque, where it has the, the, the high beginning and then goes into the low finish. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm sure not complete coincidence oh no and here the suit breathes real fire we saw this i mean yeah even though it's like that too yeah unfortunately <laughs> that too but it's kind of like um the Aegon suit where no the suit actually breathes real fire i mean it's impressive for that reason alone yeah it just sucks that you see the tube like that even though yeah that looks like more like a puppet so i think that might be like a hand it might be, yeah. Yeah. With the mouth kind of stuck open. I remember when I was little and I would see that scene. I'd always think, like, how is that too part of his anatomy? Like, it, it never dawned yeah. on me that it just, it was a kind of a, you know, bad effect. Oh, God, look at all the shit on him. That kid's in the shit now. Oh. oh. He's probably looking for the Ninja Turtles. Oh, no. To which are, they're hiding down. They're going, nope. <laughs> they're like, we want some of the, uh... Some of the ooze that they had, or he had. I know, right? I love the the effects of him, the sound of him walking. Mm-hmm. It, it gives a sense of scale. I love the scale pattern on his body, too. Like, the suit doesn't move super great, but I love the, uh, the detail, detail on it. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of... You no, know, it bugs me how long his tongue is. It doesn't make sense. 
I think that's why, to me, it's weird that his mouth doesn't close all the way, because his tongue looks too big for it. It's like some of our cats do that sometimes, when they close their mouth, the tip of their tongue is sticking out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but it looks, I mean, it's adorable when cats do it, but it looks stupid for <laughs> anything else, really. So that if he was guy, a giant cat, this, this would be face. adorable. It would be adorable. But then he would just lie around and sleep the whole movie. <laughs> and then occasionally, like, knock stuff Back off the counters. A scale ball, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I was going to say, I think that's probably, honestly, what saves the, um, the suit the most is that... You think he's going to see you, kid? <laughs> so, is this movie actually just a big game of hide-and-seek between young Gary and this child? I don't know, kid. These are the questions of our times. But, again, interesting here, too, because this scene... Oh, yes... No, you don't. No, you fucking don't. Shut up. Dude, you're covered in Shut shit. up, child. Go home. Go back to the adults who are doing shit about this. No, um, I'm saying this scene kind how of reminds... know how this factory works, child? I don't know. Maybe child labor law is a little... Lack. <sighs> He's like the foreman at this place. Oh, my God. Uh, but no, I was going to say, this scene reminds me of uh, the return of Godzilla, or, you know, Gojira 1984, where you see Godzilla feeding off the nuclear power plant. I've always said, I love when you see these kaiju, A, having, like, unconventional dietary needs, and them, like eating so i think it's cool that you they show young gary his kind of motivation like he's looking for food you know what i mean yeah so his idea was just to catch literally everything on fire at an oil factory this child man this child's so dumb well he's a child i know fuck that well he just kind of strolls up to it there we go i'm gonna knock this shit over mm -mm. He's like, I don't like my food cooked. I like it raw. Okay, I love how they also shake the camera, too. Mm -hmm. Again, this film, again, you can tell, clearly tell they didn't have a huge budget for the soup, but I love how everything involving around that they work hard to kind of beef it up. Like, when he moves, everything shakes. The suit itself has a lot of great, like, detailing on it. Like, they, you know, they, they work around their inherent shortcomings, and yeah. it kind of... But, and it basically kind of compensates a lot for... Because I feel this could have movie could have looked even cheaper if they just kind of were very lazy about it. But it shows here they very much, uh, you know... They knew what their strengths were and they really played them up, which I think is a, gr a great, you know... Yeah. Great directing. What's he doing? He's trying to poop. Sorry, he's, looking for, he's looking for his keys. He's drunk looking for his keys. <laughs> oh, God, where did I drop... Oh, I think I dropped him. Oh, shit. Uh, maybe you shouldn't drive. Shut up. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, what? Is he supposed to be itchy now? Are they bringing back the itch ray? I was wondering why they introduced that. Does have anything to do with that, maybe? Yes. Yosh. Wrong, wrong language. I know. This film, by the way, was directed maybe by... Maybe um, this is just interpretive dance. Maybe he just wants to be a dancer. It's all young yeah, Gary wanted to be, was to be a dancer. But his father said no. Yeah, this film was directed, by the way, by uh, Kim Kiduk. I hope I'm saying that incorrectly. Who also co-wrote the film. With a... Uh, Sao Young Sung. Kind of looks like he's uh, kind of two-stepping hardcore dancing. For any of you guys ever been to like hardcore metal shows, <laughs> you see a lot of that kind of, some of those moves. Looks like uh, young Gary's probably a uh, New York hardcore fan. <laughs> I got hit in the chest with a rock, but that ain't going to stop me from sciencing. A, a rock that young Gary threw at me like a dick. Look at this kid. Oh. oh no! Don't touch him. Oh, oh you! Oh, oh you! Oh, you no. made. Look at the guy back here. He's like, oh, you, you! You made it. Great. Oh hey, yeah. To totally happy you're alive. Wasn't hoping you were dead or anything. <laughs> you know where I work. Yeah, because that shit's expensive and it's not in the budget. He looks so free. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
That was sassy. I don't know. This kid acts like a 35 year old. I know. The funny thing is, this kid isn't coming across as super annoying. He sounds like a, like a mature, responsible. Like, listen, here's the thing. He's got a whole, like, listen, Linda, like, <laughs> air about Tim. You're covered in shit. At least clean yourself up. He just smacks her. Unhand me, woman! I just need to put him in a shower and make this a shower commercial. He looks like a freaking crack addict. He's all scratching himself. He's covered <laughs> in white powder. Right. He's like with that what Dave Chappelle sketch where he's always looking for a... Oh my god. Y'all got some crack? Seriously, he looks like a freaking crackhead. Young yeah, Gary's got a problem. He's jonesing. He's jonesing bad. Oh, you do, do you? Did you just see a bunch of sign in blood. <laughs> I know. Sorry, what were we gonna? No, say? I was gonna say something really stupid. Like you see them like holding the missiles, hand guiding them in. Yes. Guiding missiles? Not stupid. I'm sorry. That's funny. Your 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 thing was way more interesting. The blood sign. <laughs> He just shoots him. Oh, shit. Yes, let's just, you know, go to headquarters. Get your shitty kid cleaned up first. Like, he's just spreading that shit everywhere. Literally. I know, right? Dude, shouldn't that be, like, infected by now? Just, it's like saying, hey, so there's some shit going on. Let's go to the Pentagon in the war room, you know, just I know. go see the guy. Nothing to worry about. Bullshit, dude. Oh, this is awkward. It's pretty cool, bro. Like, you was just down on that shit. See, I kind of, I like that, though. Heat and energy, because it makes sense. You know, one of the biggest, uh, you know, arguments, like, you know, physicists and biologists and everyone else is about kaiju. Is, okay, they're too big. The, the amount of energy their bodies would need just to be able to support themselves without mm -hmm. crushing themselves would be, like, ridiculous. So I, I mean, even though it's still pseudoscience, but I like how they explain how his biology works where he has to consume heat energy, you know, which would make sense. Because if there was something they, these creatures would have to eat or consume or absorb to sustain themselves in any capacity, it would be have to basically be almost like raw energy, basically. So, I think it is kind of cool that, again, in a very unrealistic uh, s scenario... You know who that guy looks like? What? He looks like Korean Tommy Lee Jones. I think it... Oh, man, yeah, kind of in the right? face. He's yeah. a lot leaner, but he's dead. Yeah. Every time I see him, I'm just like, why does he look familiar? He's Korean Tommy Lee Korean Jones. Korean Tommy Lee Jones. Of course, now they're not showing his face again. Yeah. A little leaner, but... Yeah, well, then again, once upon a time, Tommy yeah. Jones was a little leaner, too. Once upon a time, we all were, folks. <laughs> Sometimes I look in the mirror, I'm like, Dag nab these big muscles of mine. Dag they dag just nab. keep getting bigger. Are they drinking beer? Shit, I would be right now. I know. Um, then ooh, again, I, I don't know if I'd want them uh, making decisions using missiles and shit when they're crunk. Doing shots. Let's play a beer pong and see who gets to launch the missiles. <laughs> Can you get this kid a fucking shower already? Can you get this guy some legit to a hospital? I know. <laughs> Homeboys are bleeding to death and the kid is just like covered in, in literal shit. I know. And they're making like Capri Sun over <laughs> here. Maybe they're trying to make those like icy slushies you get at the gas station. People are priorities not yet. These girls are all dolled up on their Sunday best. I'm like, I know she even changed. Didn't I she? know. Look at her. Look at her. I mean, she looks good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she's not a she's not a, a, a nice sight. I'm just saying priorities, ladies. I mean, certainly we have more pressing matters than to. That's too open.
gee, shouldn't he be like bloody and raw now with how much he's been scratching and stiff? <laughs> Send him to rehab. <laughs> I feel one of these two here is uh, this expendable in terms of you know the budget. I know. Why not just let him like wear himself out like this? Yeah, but how much damage is he gonna do while he wears himself out? But he's just dancing around in one spot, itching. So obviously he isn't really hurting much. They just fly right into him. <laughs> Not like they were doing. Well, it's been fun. Did you guys lose track of that kid again? I was gonna say he was literally, literally with just you. with you. Like you just left him behind, apparently. Look at this kid, seriously, kid. Like wipe your face off. Like what the hell? I know. The city could be literally burning around me. Like I am covered in shit right now. Yeah. I am taking a shower. Yep. I'd rather uh, risk being killed by the monster than by the, uh... Wait, are you telling me this kid somehow beat them there? He's using his itch ray. How, how did you get there, child? Well, my or thing, too, is that, A, at that range, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't even be that big on him at that range. I know. But, like, seriously, how, how did he get there? Past all the guards that were there saying you can't go in because of the missiles. That, and I kind of feel like his younger his hide would be so thick yeah. that that little ray wouldn't do shit to him. But what do I know? I'm not a itch now rayologist. Like a, you say an itchy rayologist? An itch rayologist. Oh. I believe that is the uh, correct term sure. for that particular field of study. Yeah, sure. He's pulling a camera. And I know, he it. kind of is. He's eating. For, again, I feel that he's kind of an amalgamation of Godzilla and Gamera. If you look at him, you know, he kind of has the the mouth esque of Gamera. He kind of has the mouth esque of Gamera. Yes, I said that, folks. He kind of has a oh, bit I of the. I just realized. I think they have the tongue covering that hole normally. Oh, that could be, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, when he opened his mouth before, you didn't see his tongue. And that mm. might be why it's so, like, weirdly big. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What? No, no, that, that's a good point. Not really. It was just an observation. Well, that was a good observation. Okay. <laughs> Wait, they're all in a helicopter now? Sure, why not? Why are the wives there? Well, yeah. Isn't you know. that a little dangerous? Hey, like it's progressive. Them, it's progressive. Giving them some coat. I know. Giving them the good stuff. Yeah, dump it right in his nose. <laughs> oh, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Mmm. Give daddy that powder. Oh, oh yeah. God. Look at him. Look at him. Oh my god. He's gonna be so motivated. <laughs> oh my god. Now those missiles aren't very guided, huh? One of them completely missed. Well, because they're not That's holding cute. their hands like they're supposed to. Wow. They're really doing a terrible job. I think only like three hit him. What are, what are we? Oh, that's the sky. What is it? Rain. Rain yeah. So it's gonna like, like that's like diluting the stuff or like walk, rinsing it off him. So seriously, what's the point of the, the coke powder? Oh, uh, they try to like dry him out or like make him itchy or something like that. Like they were trying to. But obviously now if it's raining, it's going to rinse all that off. So it's not going to have any effect. Well, should we order another round? <laughs> uh, I kind of feel that's how politics, government works. 
just a bunch of old dudes sitting around a room going, so what now? <laughs> so that was a five second thunderstorm, just enough to rinse them off. Ooh. He's a. Uh... The Coke is setting in. Maybe not. This guy keeps holding his chest. I'm like, dude. Yeah, it looks like governments all congratulate ourselves while there's still an actual problem. Mm -hmm. Look, it worked. Yeah, well, it's not, you know, he's still there. It's a really fancy espresso maker. I know. If I use the Java chips first. <laughs> Hey, they finally cleaned his nasty ass up. Had him change. About, about time. Damn time, I know, right? Seriously? Seriously, kid. Well, and here's the thing. How did... How did he get back? This kid, kid clearly, uh... He's like I, a teleporter. I always make fun of these kids, but I kind of want to just... Roll at him. He seems to have, like, more of an idea of what's going on and what to do. Oh, for simplicity, I thought he was going to talk about Jesus. Mm. Ha ha! Wow. You know, I was second too early. I always laugh ironically, and then I forget that this film actually has this kind of shit. Like, how about we get going then? Meanwhile, while you're all patting yourselves on the back, um... <laughs> the lab must be right near here, because I'm like, how else is this kid getting This kid here? just goes in and out, and just, like... He sneaks out to see this damn monster the way, like, teenagers, like, sneak out to meet girls and shit. Like, I seriously. Know. Like, well, that I now mean, that everyone... Dude, with the itch ray again, stop it. Like, I know, like, seriously, why is no one taking that from him? Like... Lock that shit up? My parents would, like, confiscate shit for me if it looked like I was having too much fun with it. <laughs> if I smile too often while holding something, they'd be like, hmm, you must be up to no good. Let's take that. Are you for fucking real? Why are you trying to wake the monster up? Oh, my God. This is a little meta for me because this just feels like me this morning. I was sleeping and our cat kept trying to wake me up. <laughs> and I'm just like, maybe if I just lie here and don't move, she'll go away. And then this is her, like, nudging me in the face with her cold, wet nose. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, fuck off, fuck off, please fuck off, can you please, please fuck off. And then her getting discouraged, and then they're like trying to poke me in the eye, and I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? And then me, I'm rolling over, maybe if I change position, she'll go away. <sighs> Fine, I'll Seriously, I'm I'll just feed baffled, you. like why would the kid try to wake him up? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to go with it because kids so far has had the right idea about everything. So maybe this is a good idea. This is me getting up, tired. Fine, I'll give you food. And then I walk over to their food bowl and it's still half full. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Oh, he just wanted to see him dance. And so I dance. And this is where the movie just what the gets weird. What the fuck? Yes. This is... Oh my god. Again, I know Showa era, it's kind of supposed to be a little sillier, but even with the context of this film, this is just like, makes no sense. I mean, Why he's is... definitely not supposed to be dancing, I take it, right? Yeah, me too, guys. Me too. Oh my god, that child is so uncoordinated. <laughs> Uh oh, stranger danger. That's a nice shot. Control tower, young Gary's two stepping.
So it, it's funny. We got a really good sequence of Young Gary destroying uh, the city. But, and now, it's funny because again, I, well, honestly, I think this boils down to the kind of the limited sets. Hmm. Because even if you look at this area, it's not a large set. That's why Young Gary is basically just staying in the same spot. You know what I mean? So I think they were kind of uh, limited as to what they could really do with him. Yeah. And obviously, once you destroy the city set, that's it. You know what I mean? It's kind of a one-use thing. Well, that too. And I think it's also, they probably only had one suit I'm taking, right? Yeah. Damn. I think Whereas so. Godzilla normally has at least two, you said? It depends. Sometimes, really, yeah. I know, like, in the, um, uh, in the Heisei, Heisei era, they, they usually would have, like, a water suit mm-hmm. that had far less mobility, but you kind of just kind of get it wet and kind of give it more wear and tear, where they had, like, a, the primary suit, which you would see walk in, say, that had more movement, you know, more animatronics, kind of just, and it just looked better. Yeah. Usually for Godzilla films, too, in the, in the show era, they would basically kind of reuse older suits, like previous movie suits, for, like, scenes where he has to go in the water. Scenes, things are kind of kind of destroyed the suit. Yeah. But because they were done with it, so a few shots where they had to kind of do something that would put a lot of wear and tear on it, they would just cut to one of those suits and use those. Like, yeah, we can... Yeah, we can uh, yeah, I can hear the giant monster <laughs> roaring in the background. Oh. What? When did he get there? Not all composite shots are made equal, folks. <laughs> oh. Nice. L- new little power there. So where do they lose the kid to this time? I know. Where did the kid run off to this time? Now we're back in the city. I, th- I think this film does a good job of uh, spacing out the action scenes because obviously they had to kind of be very budgetary, you know, yeah. monetary with their butt in terms of you know thinking about how they're gonna shoot them and when to use them. So I think this I think this film's actually paced pretty well. It utilizes what it has uh, pretty good, I'd say. Ooh, don't trip. Mm-mm. Yeah, I love the map paintings. Mm. Seriously, how do you not hear him? How does one guy know he's there? So basically, if that kid wasn't a shithead and woke his ass up, this wouldn't be happening, right? At least not this fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm kind of hoping they put the kid to death afterwards. (laughs) Uh, For basically being responsible for untold amounts of property damage in an incalculable... Amount of loss of life. Uh, death by firing squad. <laughs> yeah, see, even in the harsh light, the detail in the suit still looks really good. Like, yeah. it really looks good. Again, if this had been on a moment, Again, boom. the suit's made well. It's just the proportions and stuff that's a little... Yeah. Off. Again, if this was... I, I feel if they had made if a few more... the design itself was improved. Yeah. If they had made a few more of these and really kind of, you know sophisticated up their their suit techniques a little bit more i think i think they would have really been able to create some cools because again this already looks better than a lot of the stuff daya was doing with gamera mm-hmm. that's for sure because gamera looked okay but whatever he was fighting usually was kind of yeah monster. unfortunately at least in, in the show uh, in, yeah. in the 90s he, everything got amazing looking but yeah yeah a lot of the model shots are really good Again, that was wondering, like, fine work. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the what is the suit actor thinking when this is happening? That's gonna be a scary thing because now yeah. this would be like a digital shot. No one's actually there. The risk of you fucking yeah, catching fire. There's an actual guy in a suit with things blowing up on him. Like, that's a uh, that guy is earning his paycheck. Oh God! Yep. There was fire. Yeah. Though that happens sometimes. It looks great on camera, but these things, you know. That'd be terrifying if you're in there. Oh, I think part of the suit. Yeah, part of the suit is kind of. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Probably uh, shot this scene last and I take it. I would hope so. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Fuck 
you bitch. I like how you just bitch please that that airplane. You mean flying into him doesn't work? <laughs> his ah, oh, his laser reminds you of Gauss's laser, mm -hmm. where it's more like almost like a surgical a tool. Slice, yeah. Yeah, so he really is like an amalgamation of. He's basically like the Gamma franchise in Godzilla's body. Mm -hmm. Yes, we all just watched what he just yeah. did. Let's, let's bring the fam in. Yeah, let's bring the family in. Wait, when do they pick up the child? Yeah, I uh, what, When I don't they know. get him back from the... The kid probably just got on him, so he seems to get where he wants to be. But they were already in the air before, I, remember? He, he's very resourceful. <laughs> Again, I think that kid is a wizard and he can disapparate. <laughs> Again, the fact that the whole this is a why is this not a military operation? I know. Oh my god. Now they're giving him stronger drugs. Should point out too, like um, like how his eyes have a natural glow to them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you see uh, like dragons and stuff when they always kind of have their like a glow coming in behind it. It implies that the fire inside of them is like so hot that yeah. I remember I always found this is a weird scene as a kid. Cause I'm like, a the destruction of the monster is like a family affair apparently, and B it's like they're all laughing and ha ah, hi is there writhe in pain. Yeah, it, it's just a strange. It's like he's having a weird seizure. I think it's the only film where they really kind of destroy a kaiju with like an extreme allergic reaction. <laughs> Granted, it's very creative, but it's weird. Yeah. Well, I'm just like, if that's the effect it has in something like that, then what effect is that going to have on people? On the environment, I yeah. know. Uh, these are questions that were never really asked back <laughs> then. We'll deal with it after. Yeah. And again, why is why is Young Gary not like firing his laser at them? That seems to be a pretty good job before. He's too. Uh, if someone were to be doing that to me, I'd be like taking any kind of shot at him. Too itchy. I wonder it's that like, bridge is gonna be okay. I think the bridge, bridge is gonna be fine. I think the bridge is gonna be fine. Bridge. The bridge is gonna. Be, oh no. Oh shit. It goes without saying. Every bridge in a kaiju movie is gonna get fucked up. I know. The br bridges are like the red shirts of kaiju films. <laughs> They're just doomed from the start. I'm so mad. That bridge is gonna get it! Yeah, we, we can see. We were all just laughing about it. <laughs> just feel bad for Yandere, man. I know, because he's like suffering too. It's not a quick death. Hey, he wasn't. They they woke his ass up with that bomb. So, well, I know it, it, it is kind of strange because again, because they're presenting South Korea as a country in power, it, it just kind of makes them feel more like they're bullying him, really, mm -hmm. more than anything. Poor guy. It's like the most un. Dignified death, just like oh yeah. It's like damn. But when a lot of kaiju's die, that then they did show them dying. There's a lot of time that's how it was. Like where I feel like in American films, everything has to go out in a big blaze of glory. Yeah. Like here, the 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 powder would have a weird reaction that made his body ignite and catch on fire and explode. Whereas here, instead, he just you know dies. Slowly. Which is more accurate, I guess. When things die, they don't blow up Michael Bay style usually. Yeah. Oh my god, how much powder do they have? And then he starts... Like... Bleeding out of his ass. Ew. Because that's literally what's happening here. He's... Yeah. So that's how the monster ends. Twitching, writhing, and bleeding out of its asshole. That's gross. That's kind of the most unceremonious end to a kaiju ever. It's just like, shit. <laughs> uh, Bloody shit. Damn, that is rough. Stop dropping the powder. 
Okay. It's I don't the stuff. kaiju conventions where all the kaijus get together and talk. I'm sure Yagare gets so much shit all the time. <laughs> just how he went out like a bitch. Godzilla's like, yeah, they had to create the oxygen destroyer uh, to take me out. Kid, you're a little late. What do you think we were doing up here? Really? Because you guys were, like, really happy about it, like, five seconds ago. I know. In a way, if, if there was a way for me to feel sorry, in that way, I would. Let's look at him fondly. And remember this family affair. So now the whole river is contaminated with like I was kai, thinking that too. Kaiju like and hemorrhoid. whatever they put on him. Yeah, so it's yeah like the whole area just needs to be quarantined. Out. I know, really, it's got like kaiju hemorrhoid juice and like <laughs> drugs. Hey, let's congratulate ourselves because we didn't do anything once again. Hey, we just poisoned the entire water supply. Hooray! <laughs> Hey, look, it's the Mafia. Mm. No, I'm pretty sure it was, like, the guy, the kid, and, like, mm. his wife. Like, Johnny Quest and the fam beat the monster. I just stood around and talked like a Bond villain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I when am I getting paid? Look at him holding the kid with both hands. Yeah, don't go anywhere. <laughs> he needs one of those like leashes. For I him. know. I just made things worse. work Jesus. He just walks Smudge around and like harass the damn monster <laughs> again though this is very much a sign of times like where uh, the kid is somehow directly mm -hmm. involved with the solution i mean even though it's still adults like, implementing hey guys, remember it remember when he snuck out and woke his ass back up yeah yeah I remember remember that guys when he woke up and was probably responsible for the deaths of more people than necessary we could have just dumped that shit on him and he was asleep. Instead, he woke up and killed more people. Remember that? No? Not gonna print that? Alright. Oh, don't make it weird. And then, I killed him. That's the, uh... I love they're trying to wrap this up, this horrific I death. Know. They I know, I know it was terrible the way we brutally murdered him, but, you know, we can feel bad, right? We're number one. <laughs> We're number one. We're number one. We're number one. They're just gonna leave their cars parked there? I guess fuck everyone else coming to the party? <laughs> Rude. Well, if the eight-year-old thinks we should get married, let's do it. Clearly, he knows everything. I know, right? Why is he not head of the family? Why is he not head of the country? Jesus. Oh, God. It doesn't work that way. Stop implying that, like, you want your sister to, like, get boned. Like, I know. Even I, was, even, I remember, like, being eight years old, seeing this going, ah. <laughs> it's, uh, weird. But anyway, there we go, folks. Yongery. Yongery. Catch you on the next one, guys. Peace. Peace.